short tutorial, I'm going to show you how to run principal component analysis in just a few lines of code in R. So the first thing that we want to do is call a library. A library contains a lot of different functions that are going to be useful. And here we're going to use a library called ggfortify. So this library will allow us to run principal component analysis in just one line, and then we'll use an autoplot function to visualize our results. So let's first of all load a gene expression table. Now I have a gene expression table already saved, so I'm just going to grab that link real quick. And in this link, we'll have a gene expression table for 52 samples, and they will only have a small number of genes just for this illustration. It's a tab delimited file, so we have to add here set equals T. And we'll also add header equals true. Check name, well, we have, and let's uh, take also row names equals one. So that will save our header and the row data uh, separately from the actual data frame. Now we can run our principal component. So we can do PR comp expression table. And we can also plot the PCA. So let's try that. Okay, so the code ran successfully. You can see down here success running code. We can look at this plot. This plot shows us principal component one, which contains about 56% variability, explains 56% variability between these elements, objects, and PC2, which is about 23%. Now, the problem here is that this is a visualization of principal component analysis for genes instead of the objects, which are the samples that we would like to compare. So to do that, all we need to do is actually flip the table or transpose the table. So let's do that. So expression table T, and we'll do transpose of the expression table. And here we just add a T. So let's try to run that. Expression table, okay. Here made a mistake. All right, success running code. Let's take a look at what we have. Interesting, now we have some groups that emerge from this principal component analysis. Let's color these so that we can see what they actually look like. So, first of all, I can add here label equals true, and that will label the data for us. Uh, okay, so here we have now labeling of samples and we can see basal, a group of basal samples, uh, normal-like, cloud and low, and luminal. So these are some labels that we will uh, refer to when we compare the different groups. There's definitely a defined group of luminal samples, a defined group of basal and normal together, and also one of the luminal samples is here. And here we have the cloud and low. So it's already an interesting result. Now, PCA itself is sort of like taking a picture of a group of people from different angles so that we can capture as many faces as possible. So in this example, uh, we can uh, understand how 15 genes that define the objects can help us understand differences between groups of samples in a complex data set. And we can start asking questions about this data set. How are these samples different from each other? And how are these different from uh, within themselves? So what is the difference between these samples? Uh, and what are the similarities between these samples, for example? Now, if you want to learn more about PCA, I highly recommend going to our course on Introduction to Data Science. Here you have a full course called Dimensionality Reduction, PCA and Visualization, 
And in this course, we go through this example in much greater detail. So you'll see here what the table actually looks like. You'll be able to go through some exercises and visualize these different plots in a more comprehensive way. Also adding feature significance and even trying clustering. So in this full course, you will be able to play around with your data, really try to run the different pieces of code just like I did and have a challenge at the end to try and write a more complex visualization that will be informative about the data set that you're working with. So if you want to learn R and run principal component analysis, clustering, all kinds of machine learning techniques, I highly recommend this course for you to try out. So all you need to do is sign up for free on codeomicslogic.com and try learn how to develop these skills. Now, after you're done, you can also you can always copy the code and once the code is copied to your clipboard take it over to our studio to run it independently making sure that the files that you use are also saved on your computer